What if each day was like a blank canvas? Wouldn't that be neat? We'd wake up each morning and have a whole new range of possibilities, a set of infinite things that we can do each and every single day of our lives. In today's episode, I'm going to be painting an Alla Prima portrait of an apple. Yes, portrait of an apple. I tend to think of portrait almost all the time, even when I'm painting a still life. And um, if you're new to this channel and you'd like to know exactly what materials I was using, you can go ahead and scroll down to the description box down below. So we are working on a 16 by 20 cotton canvas. And again, like I was saying in the beginning, imagine each day is like a blank canvas. So many possibilities, so much that we can say. So using a little bit of cobalt teal and our flake white, a little bit of titanium white. So I'm going to start off by covering the entire ground of this canvas extremely fast. So remember, the purpose of these videos is to inspire positivity, education, and relaxation. So for the next however many minutes that are left in this painting demonstration, I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the development involved in creating this still life painting. You're going to have images of the apple uh, so the photograph of the apple play in and out of the video, but the major focus of each camera angle is going to be dedicated towards the painting footage. So that is, I will show you glimpses of the actual photograph of the apple, but just know that this painting is not meant to be a copy of the apple. I will say that it was a... Uh, uh, not a Honeycrisp, I think it was a Fuji apple, <laughs> and it turned out looking like a red delicious apple, but you know, it's okay. Whatever we want to do onto the canvas, that's what we're going to do to the canvas. So now with a little bit of perlene red, cadmium red medium, and a alizarin permanent, a little bit of alizarin permanent though, I'd say it's mostly perlene red and cadmium red medium that we used for the uh, that little reddish area. And there's a little bit of a green tone here. So this little green tone on the side of the apple is a little troublesome because green and red, as you know, are complementary, so they will kill each other off. Um, that's why I left that little spot open, almost like somebody was eating the apple. So when you're working a la prima, when you're working wet on wet, uh, there are so many ways to approach it. For this still life painting, I decided to... Uh, go more directly and cover the entire canvas and I want to do much more uh, Paintings like this. I really want to show you how I actually paint as opposed to trying to always, you know, make it that simple uh, The simple basic portrait painting tutorial though. I'm sure most of you would enjoy more of those I want to continue to develop not only as a painter, but as a uh, video creator so let's just sit back and relax and enjoy the experience And again, I won't talk throughout the entire thing. I know this video is uh, edited to be much shorter. It's a little less than 30 minutes. So I won't talk throughout the entire thing, but I will be guiding you through each and every one of the decisions that I make onto the canvas. So what you're seeing right there is pure cadmium orange. So I'm using pure cadmium orange for the half tone. And so you're noticing that this apple is of course larger than life. So I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch cotton canvas. So uh, it's just my preference to paint larger. I think that it enables me to have more control just because I can see uh, my shapes a little bit better. And so now we have swapped out to a different brush. So we use a little bit of sap green and ivory black some uh, complementary colors there, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and then our cadmium yellow medium. And so what I want is to get this value transition very fast. And again, painting in Alla Prima means you're painting wet on wet. So we're trying to build all of these shapes very, very quickly and trying to train our eye to see very specific patterns 
And those patterns are nothing more than patterns of value and color. And now we're adding in another plane. So if you're new to this channel, a plane is just a two-dimensional uh, concept of a three-dimensional flat sheet in space. That's all it is. And I will say that um, from a material standpoint, using bristle brushes and a ton of paint is a really fun way to carry loads of paint across a cotton canvas. I would, I would say that if you have a oil primed cotton canvas, that would be much better. But this one was just right out of the store in acrylic toned cotton canvas. So now we're going into some of the uh, darker plane changes. So the, a way to add depth into your paintings is to push the contrast, push the values even perhaps even further than you see it. And again, already from a distance, this is going to start to read like an apple very, very quickly. Or it'll read like a tomato. But either way, it's going to read like a three-dimensional structure in space. As long as we observe these value transitions. And a very interesting thing is that we're throwing in now cadmium yellow medium. Because at this point in the painting, I started noticing that... Uh, you know, if I started to go in with like a sap green or something, I would immediately kill off my colors. So rather than, you know, going into sap green, I'm using a little bit of my cadmium yellow medium and of course my cadmium green. Remember cadmium green, and I think that's actually a uh, gambling color. Cadmium green is a very nice tinting color. It's not, it doesn't have quite as much of a punch. Uh, so it's very nice and I, I would say it's almost like a transparent color to be honest. And you can kind of feel the energy kind of emerging from the canvas already. Now we're just using a little bit of paper towel. Although I kind of failed at this. I was trying to subtract a highlight with the paper towel, but it, the paint wouldn't give, so I just gave up on that. But you can already kind of feel the energy coming out from this canvas, and look at me still trying to, to subtract more and more light only to fail at it, but it's okay. Now what we're doing is we're softening with a four inch bristle brush. I think that's a gessoing brush, um, although I don't really use it for gessoing, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm softening all the edges and I'm going to do this a couple times just because the apple, the surface of the apple is extremely, extremely soft, even though there are lots of little spots and things like that. Uh, the apple is actually fairly smooth. And now we're putting in a little more of the, uh, of the cadmium green and I'll give you a little hint. I'm mixing cadmium green with dioxazine purple. And again, I know I have a lot of colors on my palette these days, so if you want to uh, know exactly what colors I have on my palette, please go and scroll down to the, uh, please go ahead and scroll down to the description box and all of that stuff is typed up for you. Now, notice how bright the cadmium green is when you use a ton of it, and the word, the key word is a ton, because now, at this stage in the painting, there is a lot of paint and there's something very liberating about painting with a ton of paint so if you haven't worked with oil paint before I would highly recommend uh, practicing with charcoal. Charcoal uh, kind of lends itself to the way that oil paint handles but there's something that oil paint has this property that it has to it the way it feels when you use a lot of oil paint uh, with your bristle brushes on a cotton canvas. It feels something about it just feels so natural. Now you can see how we're um, kind of trying to add more and more planes. So the more planes you add, uh, the more dimensional the painting is going to become. But I, I tell you what, I am trying to push the color. So I am, it, it tends to be my style to push warmer. That's just the way I like to observe color. You can do it with color whatever you want. 
so long as you observe the value relationships. That is, you maintain your light and shadow shapes and the subtlety of your half tones. And I am almost kind of thinking of it, like I mentioned earlier, like a, like a portrait of an apple. I'm thinking of the apple um, in terms of its placement on the uh, canvas. It's still pretty versatile. I could move the, uh, you know, the contour a little bit to the left. I could move it a little bit to the right. Because it's an apple, who cares? I mean, it, it doesn't have to be as precise. No one's going to complain about it as they're going to complain about a nose being too long or an eye being off its axis or something like that. So not to say that it's it's super easy, but uh, painting an apple is much, should I say, less uh, less strenuous on the mind just because you don't have to focus that much on the proportions of certain things as you can tell i don't have the proportion of the apple at all i pretty much have just a simple mass and you know someone could say that this is probably a cherry tomato or something but either way it's a three-dimensional structure there's lots of color lots of energy being evoked from this this canvas and that's really what i'm going after and now what we have here is a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow medium, but mostly titanium white. Now I'm using the palette knife to apply these colors just because you know what? I didn't feel like cleaning off a brush. And since we're working wet on wet, I think it's better just to cake on the, uh, the colors. And you'll see later on actually, I start to do the same thing uh, with the other half tones of the apple. So by the end of it, this apple is going to be it's going to be very, very impasto and uh, very bold and expressive in terms of the uh, the way we will push the chroma, and we'll still have a fairly realistic apple. So that's very a very fun thing to do to paint something very, very realistic, but still have lots of impasto and very expressive and bold color changes and uh, marks. It's a very uh, wonderful way to to paint. And now what we're doing is we're applying a little bit of uh, sap green mixed with the uh, cadmium green with the palette knife. And again, I'm really trying to get that impasto kind of like that, that texture. It's almost like an abstract realist painting, abstract realism. And of course, we can't forget about value. So let's go ahead and quickly cover all of these shapes here. And putting in a little bit of that dark shape that you saw in the photo reference earlier. And now we're going to go and add the little stem. So burnt umber and sap green are pretty much the only colors I'm using. And I tell you what, um, something you'll learn from watching a lot of Bob Ross videos is that uh, when you're painting Alla Prima, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. And so just like in a Bob Ross video, that would be like a twig. Imagine Bob Ross is painting a twig or like a branch over top of a sky that he's already painted. You know, the happy little sky. Um, you see how the paint was kind of dripping a little bit. So that's the magic of wet on wet. You know, as Bob Ross would say, the joy of uh, the joy of oil painting. So there is quite a lot of joy when you're able to overlap uh, a wet layer of paint over top of another wet layer of paint. It's a very relaxing thing too. And now we're just going to sneak in a little more green with the sap green. But we don't need to do too much for the stem. And now as you can tell from the side view, um, just trying to give you a little bit of a different perspective here. So you can tell from the side view uh, and this close up that the marks are very bold and expressive, but we're starting to now get a sense of a realistic apple. And it's pretty neat to be able to uh, be this expressive and yet this realistic with an oil painting. It's an expressive yet very realistic apple. 
a larger than life apple. So now what we're doing is with the impasto, that is pretty much straight up cadmium yellow medium on the side of that highlight. And again, the apple is really, really bright. And that highlight, it's almost hurting my eyes to look at it. It's so bright. But again, that's the effective light that we're trying to get from this apple. And remember, painting still life is a really, really good way to uh, improve on your technique. Because with still life, you don't have the, um, the strain on you of trying to obtain a likeness of a model. You don't have to worry about, you know, the anatomy of it. Although there can be some anatomy to certain still life objects. But for the most part, it's... It's much less, it's much more forgiving, okay? And the main highlight, remember, it's mostly titanium white, but it has a little bit of cadmium yellow medium. The half tone directly next to the highlight is pretty much just cadmium yellow medium. But then I start to mix the cadmium yellow medium with the cadmium orange, and that's what you're seeing there. So the cadmium yellow medium uh, with the cadmium orange together. I also have a cadmium yellow deep on the palette, so mixing the cadmium red medium with the cadmium yellow deep also gives me a nice uh, subtle half tone. So again, this is a very, very chromatic uh, still life painting. It's a very bold and expressive, I mean, you know, I keep saying the same thing, but notice how it almost looks like fire, like, uh, you know, like the highlight is on fire. And that's the kind of look that I'm trying to get out of this painting. And uh, what's your aesthetic? That's going to be question of the day. So what is what is your aesthetic? What do you like when observing uh, oil paintings or when observing your own paintings? What, what do you strive for in terms of your own personal aesthetic? Are you more of someone that tries to get, um, you know, something to be perfect like a photograph? Or do you like to be a little more bold and expressive? Or do you like a little mix of the two? And it also, if you if your aesthetic is different, if you enjoy a more abstract type of painting or you know something different, feel free to comment down below as well. And now with the palette knife, just scraping alongside to get a, a softer touch. I'm almost actually trying to blend with the palette knife. To get some kind of uh, interesting textures. Almost like the later Rembrandt paintings that look more like they're woven. So now a little bit of the um, cadmium orange and titanium white. So I'm kind of going all across the color wheel really. Uh, because we have more of a reddish on the right of the apple more yellowish towards the middle, greenish towards the side, bluish, greenish towards the stem, and now like a little bit of an orange, almost kind of gray towards the bottom. I'm sorry that the palette knife is going out of shot a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little more impasto into the background. Like I said, uh, by the time that this, um, by the time that we're done with the painting today, this canvas is going to be loaded with paint. It's a really uh, wonderful thing to observe. So cobalt teal, dioxazine purple, a lot of titanium white. So there we go with the cobalt teal. Cobalt teal is one of my favorite colors. I think it's that's actually a, a gambling color. I actually couldn't find it in Windsor and Newton. So that's a gambling color, cobalt teal, that I really do enjoy. It's a fairly expensive blue, uh, so I am kind of running out of it almost completely. <laughs> but I, I love to use it in backgrounds. It's just, uh, you know, if you go to my Instagram account, a lot of my figure paintings that I, that I do have a lot of cobalt teal in the backgrounds. So we want a lot of paint because we're going to have a very uh, thick an impasto type background and at the same time we're also going to sharpen some of the edges. So see how much paint is on that. And again it's not straight up titanium white because I want the lightest thing on this canvas to be the highlight on the apple. Even though it's not the case in the photo reference it would be the case observing it from nature 
So we're just putting in that kind of simple edge there. And it's very fun to spread the oil paint almost like it's icing on the cake. Literally it looks like spreading icing on top of a cake. I really do enjoy this kind of texture. And it fits in pretty nicely with the purple on the on the foreground. And we're just going to blend some of it into the side of the apple there. Just for a nice little touch. Now I've been playing around with this idea in my head. Uh, you know, each day is like a blank canvas. Imagine how amazing it would be to wake up each day and have it be just like a blank canvas full of so many possibilities. Now, not too long ago, this was a blank canvas. And now look at all of the effects that we're starting to display onto this canvas. Even if you're not a painter, and tell you what, if you're not an oil painter and you're watching my uh, painting videos, please go ahead and comment down below. Comment something like, I don't know, whatever you want to comment, okay? <laughs> I can't think right now. But I really would like to know what, what it is, what it's like to see this type of process because, you know, I'm, we artists are so, we have so so much tunnel vision. You know, we're very focused in our work and we tend to not really think too much about anything else. But what is this like? Is it kind of a more relaxing experience? Is it something that helps you go to sleep? Uh, what is it to you? And now what we're going to do is, um, again, soften these edges with that large four inch gesso brush. And it is a bristle brush. So I went through several kind of, um, I don't know, several kind of layers of putting in the halftones and then softening it like this. So I would put in the halftones and then soften it, put in the halftones and then soften it just to get a much nicer consistency of the oil paint. Because lately I have been experimenting with uh, paint handling and notice you have a very nice close-up here of the bottom of the apple. And uh, we're using a synthetic now to soften these edges. See how we're just dragging the paint? We're kind of uh, herding the paint all the way down to the bottom of the apple. And you can get some really interesting uh, results when you're using a softer brush over top of uh, a ton of paint. See how we're very easily just softening these edges? And letting it carry all the way through. We're trying to ensure that those planes are turning away from us. Even though the photograph may flatten this out, we know that when we're constructing a, uh, a type of oil painting that is three-dimensional in nature, or we're representing something that's three-dimensional, the more of these planes that you can describe, the more volume you'll have. So now we're going to throw in a little more of the alizarin permanent into the side of the apple. And alizarin crimson permanent is a really, really nice and dark red to help push those turning planes. And that's all. Just pushing these little turning planes and also softening these little edges and creating these transitions from light to dark. And again, that's really what's going to give us the volume for this apple because this apple is primarily in frontal light. And now let's just clean off the brush a little bit with our odorless mineral spirits. And now we're going to tackle that little greenish area again. So that's our cadmium yellow medium that we're putting onto the brush. So I decided at this point to try and push the Bob Ross mentality <laughs> of applying thinner paint over top of thicker paint to see if it worked and look at it, it's working. It's almost like the layer underneath is dry. And that's the magic of oil painting, the way that you can manipulate the oil paint. And again, that's something I'm trying to work on. And each and every day, I really want to create a painting that is better than the painting that I made in the previous day. And remember, better is a relative term. For me, what it means is to further depart from a photographic look, but still maintain a sense of depth and volume in my painting. 
And yes, I am using a ton of paint because I ran out of titanium white. And now we're going to uh, mix again that cobalt teal that was already kind of pre-mixed on the palette with the titanium white. And what we're going to do is we're going to sharpen some of the edges now. It's just important to have sharp edges as it is to have soft edges. So right here we're trying to add much more focus to the top of the apple. And we're even going to let some of these brush strokes play. See that? Just letting some of the brush strokes show through. Because I'm not interested in a perfectly uh, f rendered photographic apple. It would just be kind of boring to me. What I want is to kind of create something that's realistic but expressive in nature. And now we're going to push these plane changes even further, perhaps even further than we see them on the photo reference. And again, that is pretty much just cadmium yellow medium with cadmium green together. And with a little more of our medium, uh, I didn't use too much to be honest, but at this point I am using my medium. It's Neo McGill medium. It's a fast drying medium. It's a gel like medium that allows me to thin out the paint without uh, using too much odorless mineral spirits. So now you can see that plane that we added, uh, it's kind of adding a little bit of a pocket. So making it look like uh, the con concavity of the apple. So we're definitely trying to get the volume uh, via the uh, the planes. And we're just going to soften that little transition there with a uh, clean and dry synthetic brush. Just going to soften the stem as well. And now we're going to add some of the spots to the apples. So what I did was just a single brush stroke of cobalt teal and um, softening it as I go. And again, let's just continue to have a much more specific shape. And so now the painting is done, except it's missing one thing to call it finished. Can you guess? Okay, if you, if you guessed what it is, go ahead and comment down below what this painting is missing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a signature. So we're going to use burnt umber, a really small synthetic brush, and a lot of our odorless mineral spirits. And again, remember, uh, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. And there we go. Here's my signature. And now we have a completely finished oil painting created all in one day, kind of like a portrait of an apple. Very bold, simple, and expressive oil painting. That being said, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity among all of us. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back again very soon.